Welcome to the Daily Needs, a daily look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I'm talking about the 2015 film Minions. Mm. Ah, need I say more? Um, I saw Despicable Me, the first one, in theaters when it came out. Um, and I enjoyed it. I did. I was, like, you know, still in college. Um, like, uh, older, but still kind of acted like a kid all the time, and it, like, it worked for me. It was fun, there were great moments, um, told a great story, uh, about, like, family, and it was great, and I'll admit my favorite part, the, the part I liked the most of that movie was the minions. I liked them. Because every, every, like, ten minutes between scenes, these little yellow guys would show up, do a quick 15 second gag, and then we'd move on to the story, and it was a nice... It was a nice bumper. It was a nice little break between scenes. It was a nice bit of a bit of humor between what, what could have been like heavier scenes or plot-based scenes, exposition, that kind of thing. And I thought it was great. I don't think I saw Despicable Me too. If I did, I forget. Um, and then last year they made a feature-length movie starring those little yellow turds called Minions. And, you know what, it could have worked if it was a series of shorts. I, w I would like to see little four minute videos, short films before other movies or online or what have you of the minions with Napoleon or the minions with, uh, I don't know, Genghis Khan or like the minions with like any, like other like, historical villains. Like, like I want to see Judas Iscariot get handed the 30 pieces of silver by a minion. Like, that's what I'd want to see. And then also just how the minions mess it up for the villains. Like, and there was a little bit of that in the beginning. The first 10 minutes of the film were, like, what I would want to see a series of shorts. Maybe five, six shorts. And that's it. That's all I'd want to see out of this. Um, but no... That ten minutes finished, and then the movie began, and it was not good. Um, I just, I don't mind when movies leave me with questions. Who didn't ask them, ask themselves if the end was a dream or not at the end of Inception? Every audience left that theater going like, was it real or a dream? Like, I don't mind when movies make me ask questions, but when every question is, wait, what? That's the problem. Um... Because I may be remembering this incorrectly, but I remember Gru mentioning that he created the minions in Despicable Me. And he had them all, like, and that's part of what I liked about them. Like, they all had a specific purpose. Like, he had one that was a glow stick, and he shook him and cracked him, and then he glue. That was cool. I liked that, and he did experiments on them. Like, like that's what I liked about them. But no, they started out as, whatever, single-celled organisms? And their sole purpose is to find the most evil person on the planet to work for them but they're not good at it so you'd think evolution would just you know roll them off at some point when they ruin like Napoleon's Russian invasion and push dinosaurs off cliffs but were not you know made extinct when the, the asteroid hit which I would have liked but no so their whole mission is to find the most evil person, and then they find her, and do her job, and then end up f purposely finishing her off. Why? Why? Would, wouldn't it make more sense if when she's trying to blow them up for them to help? Like, wouldn't Kevin, like, his whole goal is to, to help? Wouldn't he just help her blow up Bob and Stuart? Right? Am I reading too much into this children's movie? Why... Why didn't he blow up at the end? He ate a bomb, which the bomb itself came from a small metal ring around her waist, which expanded into a rocket, which hurts me inside because the conservation of mass and matter. But okay, so he swallows this bomb. And when it blows up inside him, it just makes him small again? What? 
I... I want to be more coherent, but it's just... There's just waves of what in my head. How come... When... The scene that actually made me leave the room... When they're breaking in to steal the crown... And he uses the hypno... The hypno hat... To make the guards sing and smack each other's butts... Why were they singing in minion language? Why? Wouldn't they sing in English? They speak English. They're in England. Why? Why... Why would Scarlet, who's got this free labor that gets her what she wants, torture them? You have free labor and they've gotten you what you want. Thank them and ask for something else. They're happy, you're happy, everybody wins, except for England. Why does Bob become... <sighs> Bob become king of England based on an ancient legend? And then when he tries to give the crown to Scarlet, they say they're lost. Where, where were those laws 20 minutes ago? When he went from stealing the crown to just... Oh, I guess he's king because ancient legend. And even if that's, like, I'll accept that. But Stuart and Kevin didn't pull the sword out of the stone. And they were very clearly trying to steal the queen's crown. That's still a crime. Why weren't they prosecuted? Where's the prime minister? Everyone knows, like... English royalty is just kind of like a... It's not really the people in charge. There's a prime minister who... is actually in charge... And then... The one... The one thing that made the most sense... In the whole movie... Was, I think, unintended. And it was over the final credits. The end credits. The Beatles are playing, and it's a song got to get you into my life. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. The, the intent, I think, of the filmmakers, uh, sorry, the intent of the thing makers was, oh, we found Gru, we have to get him into our life, that's the message they're trying to do. That song is a love song about marijuana. And that's not a theory, Paul McCartney has said that. There must have been a lot of marijuana floating around the, uh, studio... Not studio. Studio is not the right word. The garbage pit where this movie came from. There must have been a lot of marijuana floating around there to get this thing made. Just... There's no... Uh, there's no consistency. Something will happen, and then... It's done, it's happened, and then something else will happen. There's no, like, through line. Like... If... If any... Like, the... There's a bit, there's a hint of a character arc with the minions, and that's weird that they're characters and not background noise. Even though there were a lot of background noise, the character arc is like, oh, he's, Kevin is, wants to work for bad guys, and now he's done good. He did it, he did this good thing, he helped save England, everybody's happy. Oh no, a new bad guy, I gotta follow him. There's no character arc. I understand it's a prequel, you have to get them working for Gru for the first one to make sense, which it already made the first one not make sense, but that's besides the point. Like, I understand that, but still, I don't think Kevin the Minion is in the first Despicable Me movie. I looked at I looked at the Wikipedia article a minute ago, and, and Bob and Stuart are there, as well as some of the other ones, but I didn't see Kevin's name listed. So, like, why not have him be a good guy and have him change his ways? Why not? Like, it's just... Why? How did the, the family of American bank robbers get into England for two coronations at a moment's notice? They're wanted criminals. Nationwide. How did they get on an airplane? How did their passports not get stopped? How come Orlando doesn't exist in 1968? They were starting to build Disney World at that time. Orlando was there. Where? Why? Why did it say coming soon? Orlando's been a city since the 1800s. It's on the East Coast. Like, the Spaniards settled there. 
Like, yeah, it's built on a swamp, but it was built on a swamp in the 1800s. Why... Why did that joke have to happen? It's like... Where did the minions get their clothes in their cave in Antarctica? How did they get to Antarctica? Because the way the film made it look is they were running from Napoleon in Russia and then found a cave. The Wikipedia says Antarctica, but I think they were just in a cave in Russia. If they were just in a cave in Russia, do you know who, who else tried a military coup in Russia about 60 years after Napoleon? Hitler! Where was Hitler? They want to work for the world's greatest monsters, why weren't they working for Hitler? I mean, I understand it's a kid's movie, but... Why? I have so many questions, and all the questions are why? And a few what? And, and a really or two? I just... Last weekend we watched Inside Out, Cody and I, and also came out last summer. And it was also a, an animated film for kids. But Inside Out touched upon depression and emotions and growing up and family and all these other things and like what makes you who you are, your identity. And, and it touches upon so many real things that kids can relate to, parents can relate to. It can start a conversation in a home about these things. I suffered from depression. I would have really appreciated a movie like Inside Out when I was a kid. I would have loved that. It would have helped make so much sense of my own whatever is going on in here. And that same summer, Despicable Me comes out and it's bright colors and stupid music. And the protagonists don't speak a language that's real and they mumble gibberish for 90 minutes and then there's a song at the end. And this movie made so much money because so many parents took their kids to see this and there's nothing of value. It's... I maybe smirked at one or two jokes, one or two visual gags, but beyond that there's nothing redeemable. There's no... There's no great moral message. There's no... Uh, nothing to discuss. At the very least, they could have touched a bit more on history at the beginning and have been like, the year is 18 whatever and Napoleon is trying this, but no, it was just a quick visual gag of Napoleon getting shot by his own cannon. That's not why he lost the, the land war in Russia in winter. He lost it because he was in Russia in winter. Like, there's nothing, there's no reason to show this to a child other than shut up for 90 minutes. There's not, this is, it's bright colors on a screen and, and, and sounds. I don't even, even want to say like good sounds. It's just sounds. I got, I had to get up and leave the room multiple times because it just, it hurt me because there was nothing going on. They ruined the Beatles after the credits. And yes, I watched the entire credits. After the credits, they all get together and, well, Stuart comes out with his guitar and starts playing the opening riff of the Beatles' Revolution. Now, I knew this was coming because I watched the credits and I saw that Revolution was credited. And I was like, I love this song. I didn't hear this song. Oh, goodness, they're doing something after the end of this movie with this song. But he comes out and plays the opening riff. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And then the minions come out and they start singing Revolution and whatever singing is for these things and I was like okay please end just just you got your gag out it's fine end but every character from the movie has to come into the room and join in and sing and none of them are singing English it's 1968 this song was huge then it's the Beatles everyone knew the words to revolution why was everyone singing in, in minionish like that it's just nothing makes sense nothing is consistent nothing is worthwhile there's no reason to watch this film I thought League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was bad but I hadn't seen the minions yet and what really worries me is this is unironically popular with adults I have an adult friend who watches who likes the minions 
You know who you are. Stop. If you're watching this, no. You've made a mistake. This movie is bad. And not just poorly made. It's bad. It, it teaches kids to follow villains? Like, is that, is that the moral? Hey kids, everything will work out okay because you're indestructible and bad guys are really good guys. They're the guys you should be rooting for. Like, what? It doesn't, it's no. No. The animation was good. There were some water effects I liked in New York in 1968 looked good. The character designs, people and the minions I didn't like, but, but backgrounds and things look good. But that doesn't save anything. It doesn't save anything. That's it. <sighs> Tomorrow I'm watching The Seven Samurai. Um, Akira Kurosawa, high quality Japanese film. Um, basis for The Magnificent Seven, uh, which is a great western that's being remade. Um, so I'm watching that tomorrow, tune in for that. Uh, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you can answer literally any of my questions. Please do. Follow me on Twitter at Daily Needs. And, um...